Hey guys, Ray Jam. So it is uh, 12.02 December 2nd. So again, I'm a daily vlogger living with conditions. And I just did live um, earlier. So <laughs> there's a lot of douches. I was like, you know what? I gotta do some more douche bags for you guys. <laughs> Because of that, because of like, oh, so there's just so many douches on YouTube, but in life in general, <laughs> it's just so funny sometimes. So yeah, I gotta catch you guys up on some stories. So this story, <clears throat> it's weird because I was actually dreaming about this the other day and I completely forgot about them and their crushes. This is like back in the day when I was, uh, so once again, I was, um, did I say daily vlogger living with conditions? Yeah, so, and that's my intro, and then, because I did live, I didn't get a chance to vlog throughout the day, because I was busy, and I thought friends were going to come by, but they ended up not coming by, so then I was busy talking with them. I went and got some free stuff from the Buy Nothing group, which I'll show you guys later. I still haven't got around to that yet. And then I did, uh, got stuff ready for Big Brothers. My family and I are both donating, like, at least, I think, probably, like, six boxes all together, maybe more than that. And then I was like, oh, I might have to help during live, but then I didn't have to, so that was good. Finally took a shower today. <laughs> so I really had not done anything though. I did a little bit of dishes and yeah, really didn't do much because like I said, whenever I do lives, it's like, uh, that kind of takes a lot of time consuming, <laughs> even when I try to do stuff during live. So actually, like I said, I don't want to share photos anymore of people. I just showed Cody's photo because... Cody's hot, and I still have a thing for him. So, once again, I am Christian. Even though a lot of people don't believe that I'm Christian because I'm into the Phantom of the Opera and stuff, which in Pretty Cougar, which is my background. <laughs> and so, I try to always have that in my angle. It's kind of hard because of the light. Oh, yeah, maybe if I go this way. So, yeah, I am Christian, but... um. I did a thing called God's Wings. Oh, and actually, no, I don't know where it is. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I showed it, though, in a video. Anyway, so, <clears throat> this is more talking, not showing you guys stuff. So, I did a thing called God's Wings, which was a, if you guys don't know Drime, Drime is a group out in 2W, 2WU Langley, and they do drama dance team downtown. I think they still do it, I'm not quite sure, but if they do, it's on Robson. So, the last time I checked, they still did it. <clears throat> so, I created a dance team called God's Wings. And because of that, and I actually came up with the choreographic moves. I chose a song. We went to different churches <laughs> and did performances. We went to TWU. We did stuff with Drime. It was pretty cool. But at the same time, for those who don't know about my past, once again, I did see some of the dragon and I did drugs and like pot and stuff like that. <laughs> And I was actually doing that during that time, <laughs> which is, well, it's kind of funny because I'm like, I don't want people to know. I don't want my family to know. I don't want the church to know. I don't want people to know. So that's why I kind of did, even though, yes, I was still Christian, I kind of double-sided it. So then that way I could kind of like hide from my life behind this, behind everything. But like I said, now everybody knows everything, like. I told everybody the truth about Chasing the Dragon. I told them they already knew that I was a player. <laughs> that was never a secret. But, um, yeah, even my pastor didn't know, which is kind of funny. 
So I did the dance team to make it kind of like a cover up. Be like, oh, Mary is doing a dance team and she's so into Christianity and she, there's nothing, she's not doing anything wrong. <laughs> she's perfect. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was so not perfect. That was just a cover up to hide from my family because my mom is an obsessive Christian. And so is my godfather, and he lived in Vancouver at the time, so if they knew that I was doing drugs, <laughs> I would have got, I would have gotten in so much trouble, I would have been living in Surrey 24-7, I probably would have been, like, in the military or something, because they actually talked about that, they're like, oh, we gotta get Mary into shape, and change our life around, and blah, 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 but, so that's why I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna check everybody and pretend that I'm somebody that I'm not. So again, another reason why I love the band of the opera is because I hid behind the mask. So again, this is when I was like 14, 15, 16, around that time where I was doing drugs and living on the street and doing crime and getting arrested and people did not know. And once again, everything I did was underage. So. There's no record. Um, I never I said that in Juice Bag Story Time and called multiple times. Of course, I could never say exactly everything that I did because <laughs> I'm, even I'm kind of ashamed about that and then I'll never tell anyone. I think I've only told my best friend and yeah, only my best friend knows. So that's why I was like, when people are like, oh, Nat's such a bad guy. I'm like, I was way worse than that. Getting into crime and doing bad stuff to the point where I actually spent the night in jail. But again, I can't say what it is. Because I was underage. And I don't want people to really know that stuff. But yeah, like I said, um, only a few people know. But once again, this is also my past, which is why I like talking about this stuff. So once again, this stuff happened when I was part of this Christian ants team. And I was still a Christian. I still believed in God. I've always believed in God because, like I said, to me and my brothers, if I don't believe in God, I'll never see my brothers again. And that's, and that's why I became a Christian before I even learned how to talk. My mom said when I was a baby, a person with a few words would be like God and Jesus and mom, dad, that kind of stuff. So that's why I go, even before I could talk, I, was, I knew I was Christian because that's the only way that I would have seen my brothers. And I firmly believe there's something better out there than the life that we that we have. So that's what gives me hope. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, um, where was I with this? So, yeah, I did the Christian dance team. And, um, <clears throat> one of my pastors I'm still, uh, friends with, and we meet up quite often, Pastor Jack. And I met up with him, and I actually talked, told him all the stuff. He's like, I'm so sorry I didn't know. <laughs> he feels so guilty. <laughs> I was like, it's, I hit it really, really well. I don't want people to know. But it didn't mean that I wasn't Christian. And just because I smoke doesn't mean that I'm not Christian. Just because I'm into history and ghost and weird stuff that most people aren't into does not mean that I'm not Christian. It's what I enjoy. It's what I like. So. And, uh, yeah. So, I told him that. And the reason why Pastor and Jack and I became friends was because his son was gorgeous. <laughs> so I had a, I had the hots for a son. And he didn't even know that. And uh, Richard knew though. So he's the first guy that I'm talking about because of this whole dance team. But once again, I'm, I'm living double lives at the same time. I'm with Michelle, but I still like Richard. And I think he kind of knew that stuff. <laughs> but I did tell him how I felt and stuff like that. And that's why I kind of did the whole drama team, because it was at TW and Richard was at TW, so we'd always go there. And I ended up being close to his family, like Pastor Jack. But Richard has kids now, and he has, 
he's a Christian guy, so, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> it would never, it would never have worked out. But it was funny because I had a huge crush on him growing up. And everybody in the church knew, including him. <laughs> and I actually got the whole church group to go to TWU to go see one of the games. But we all got lost. <laughs> and we all called Richard and we're like, we don't know how to get, we don't know where we are. We can't see you, stuff like that. But then we ended up getting a ride to my place in Surrey, so it was all good, but I was just like, wow, we got lost trying to <laughs> watch this game, <laughs> uh, and then, so yeah, like I said, because I had a crush on him, I was doing this dance scene, but it wasn't just for him, it was like, I also believed in God a lot, and seeing what Drime did inspired me to do it. I still remember some of the dances, actually. There's a song from Carmen called Slam. And that was a fun song to do. And we would do, like, Slam, Devil. And we'd, like, dance and sing at the same time kind of thing. But I did all the choreography, like I said. I know I repeat myself a lot. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and then... I went to, me and my friend went to TW again to go see Richard, and we bust there, and I didn't know, like, where he was staying or anything like that, so I was like, hmm, how are we going to track him down? <laughs> so we knocked on every single door at TW, going, do you guys know Richard, do you guys know Richard, do you guys know Richard? <laughs> <laughs> and we finally found him, and he wasn't mad at all. He's like, "Oh my goodness, he came to see me!" And we're like, "Yeah." And we don't, we didn't know, like, <laughs> uh, what room he was in or anything. We were just like knocking on all the doors, <laughs> being like crazy people. <laughs> Man, just um, thinking about it now, I'm like, well, I'm surprised we didn't get in trouble. But I think because our youth group always went there and because I was part of, of the Christian dance team they knew how I was so it's not like they I'm like this crazy stalker <laughs> so yeah I'm I'm going around knocking on the door and then I, like I said I finally saw Richard and he was so happy to see us and he invited us to a hockey game so we went to the hockey game we actually spent the night at TWU but it was at uh somebody else's room he set that up for us so it was really cool but then what do you call it um he went to kenya because my pastor does um ministry work and actually do i still have actually no i think i throw those out yeah in one of the decluttering videos so i actually held on to all the letters that Richard and his family wrote to me when he was in Kenya, and then I'd write to them. So nothing ever happened. Like, I told them that I liked him, but nothing ever happened. And like I said, I found out later that he was married and he had kids when he came back. So it's like, nothing ever happened. But <clears throat> these memories are just kind of funny that, yeah, we went down to, <laughs> to go see him. And we got lost, and then the second time we went there, we didn't know which room we was in, so we are just banging on the doors. <laughs> and then we were finally traveling around our dance team um, with that, so kind of forgot about Richard, and then, like I said, life goes on, life goes on. And like I said, Pastor Jack and I are still friends to this day, and I still call him my pastor, even though he retired. But yeah, everybody knew that I was crazy about him, but nothing ever happened, so. And then there was this other guy named Ruben, and he was also part of my church youth group. So this was before Richard, actually. And I had a major crush on him. Major, major crush on him, but I was really young. This was before I got into drugs and before... I did the dance team and all that stuff. So, yeah, Ruben and I were really close. He was pretty cute. He was, like, a tall, skinny white guy, again, with glasses. He was a nerd, like me. <laughs> I'm still a nerd. 
And he is also part of my church youth group, which is related to um, Pastor Jack and his son, and we're all friends. So then, uh, yeah, so Ruben's family lived on a farm, so we'd always go out there for the youth group, and we'd spend the night on the farm, it was pretty cool, and you guys remember that I went to dirt bikes, so Ruben and I would always do dirt biking, and we always had a thing for, or I mean, I always had a thing for him, but then I think we were too, once again, we were too, uh, what's the word, we were too much, like, friendship, we were too much on a friendship basis, kind of thing, to, like, ever anything happened so I never really told them how I felt and again I guess I have more what if guys but <clears throat> I kind of know that nothing would have happened because he's uh once again a Christian guy <laughs> and he's not into smoking and he's not into probably accepting my past stuff like that so I don't think anything would have ever happened but I actually found him on Facebook once again a couple years later <laughs> And I told him that I liked him. He's like, yeah, I knew. But it was so sweet because um, my family dog, sadly, um, it was my birthday. And I had a party here with like all the kids from the youth group. And Richard was there, too. It wasn't just Ruben. And it was, <laughs> it was so sad. <laughs> And this is probably why I never got a dog again. Well, I did get a, a poodle. Like I said, I've had two dogs. Coo was the family dog. And the muffin was a poodle. And <laughs> wow, it just seemed about to make me feel sad. <laughs> so yeah, I wish I had a photo of this dog. But I've talked about him before because I'd be like, I used to go to Surrey all the time to go look after him. And I'm the small little kid. <laughs> Uh, I should, I should, for my next story time, I should bring photos of me when I was a kid. <laughs> There's actually videos. Actually, I can show you guys photos of me as a kid on, from Facebook. So, yeah, there's, uh, just so you guys could see, like, what I was like as a kid. If you guys haven't seen it yet. So, anyways, it was really sad because I threw this party. And I was with Ruben and Richard and everybody. And this dog, I used to always go, and his name was Koo, and he's a German Shepherd. He was so big, but I was the only one that would take him for walks and <laughs> be with him and spend time, spend time with him. And, uh, yeah, so I was, <laughs> so the dog is like this big, like freaking huge, like taller than me. And I'm so <laughs> walking the dog, and he's so, because uh, I'm so small, when I'm walking the dog, I'm actually flying in the air. <laughs> so I'm walking the dog, flying in the air, and <laughs> people were laughing their head off. <laughs> They're like, oh, there's Mary walking the dog. She's the only one that gives us attention. <laughs> it's so, so funny. I'm like, yeah, I was so small, so, let's see, what's a good photo to show my size? So you guys know what I was like when I was a kid. So, um, I think I was like a little teenage kid then. Hmm. Here we go. The nerd photos. <laughs> the nerd photos is what I got. I was such a nerd. Oh my goodness. So yeah, this is when I was looking after my dog. And all this stuff happened, so. <laughs> uh, which photo should I show? I should just show you guys actually a few photos of me. So here's a photo of me as a kid. <laughs> this is my cousin. I was so cute then, but look at my face. It's like, I don't know if you guys can see it because of the light. 
<laughs> I look so deformed there. Because <laughs> my face isn't like totally backed up. Oh, sorry, you guys can't see it. Maybe I'll just post it in the community tab. Oh, there you go. So, yeah, that's me. But, yeah, I'll, I'll say this and I'll post it in the community tab so you guys can see. <laughs> but that's not the size of me when I was a kid. So, when I, when I, when I, I had the dog. So, actually, I'm pretty cute in this photo. So, there we go. This is how small I was. So, I'm wearing the Mickey Mouse thing there. That's my brother. Sorry, that's my brother. That's me. So, I'm wearing the Mickey Mouse and the pink jacket. So, this is when, like, I first had my dog. And then when he died, so, like, that's how small I was. Oh, sorry, so I kind of blurred the story <laughs> ahead of time. So, yeah, unfortunately, he passed away. And then Ruben was with me, and I was like, oh, what happened? <laughs> and I'm like, my dog just died. <laughs> He's like, what? <laughs> Still kind of sad because that dog was so cute. So then I was like, yeah, my, my dog died, and um, I want to go see him because it's, he's all the way in Surrey and I'm by myself. And my uncle just calls to say, I just hit him with a mop and I think your, <laughs> your dog's not moving, he's dead. Sorry, it is kind of, death is not really a good thing for me to talk about. So, yeah, it was really sad. So he was like, oh, give me hugs. And he's like, oh, if you really want to go see your dog with me, let me take, I'll go with you the next day to go see him. So I was like, okay. So we went to go see him. But we were going to go see him, but unfortunately they uh, got rid of the, the body and stuff like that, so I didn't get to say, say bye, to, bye to him. Sorry, I forgot to say a warning <laughs> for those. So here's a photo of me when, whoops, so you could see my size. So yeah, I was a short kid. <laughs> There, so that's like when this stuff kind of happened when I was living over there, and I was like, I just felt so bad that I couldn't even see my dog when he passed away. And I was just like, my poor, my poor, <laughs> my poor dog all by himself. But oh, here's a baby photo of me. Look how cute I am! Look at the big head. <laughs> I'm just showing you guys old photos of me at the same time, but um. Yeah, so it was, like, so sad, and he was there for me, so this is why I'm talking about him, because he was always there for me when I needed him, which was awesome, and then we even went to Camp Kwanos, and like I said, I did have a crush on him, but like I said, our, once again, our friendship was more, our relationship was, like, a friendship, too close, so nothing ever happened, but... At the same time, I was just like, oh, he's always there for me. I was like, I kind of wish we got together, but at the same time, I kind of know that nothing would have happened. Because once again, he's a Christian guy. <laughs> through and through. But I was just like, whenever I think about him, I'm like, oh, my poor dog. And I think maybe I, I'm thinking about my dog because my cat's passed away in January. So, January and February, so it's really hard to, uh, Think about and maybe I should do a story time like all these photos <laughs> that I'm looking at it. Maybe that's what I'll do next. Yeah, so yeah, so it was so sad. But then me and Ruben we went to Camp Quanos together. We did a lot of uh things together, nothing but nothing ever happened. So but yeah, for some reason I'm just like I was thinking about my dog last night, I was like Oh, <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, I never got to say goodbye to my family dog, but like I said, people were laughing because they were like, oh, there she goes, so it's not really douche, there's no really, there's no really douches in the story, it's just that I've had crushes on some of you guys, and 
thinking about them and my past and all that, it's, it's really <clears throat> opening up my eyes a bit more to, like, see, hey, you know what, um, there's still good guys in, in this life, in this world, and I know a lot of people don't like Christian guys, because, like, even I'm like, I'm, eh, Christian guy's not gonna like me, because I smoke, and I do this, and I do that, but you don't necessarily have to be, like, people look at me, and they're like, you're not Christian, and, like, only, only God could judge me, and it's what's in my heart that matters. And, yeah, so, I don't know, I guess, the other reason why story, story time douchebag I'm talking about this stuff is because it's part of my past, and, like, uh, there are actually some really good guys in this world, it's just, you just have to <clears throat> be patient, and not be so judgmental, not be like, hey, you know what, I'm never gonna date, date a Christian guy, uh, we're too different, blah, 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 like, everything happens, like I keep saying, everything happens for a reason, and there's also another guy that I had a crush on at Camp Planos, and his name was Jeff, and he was a really good guy, too, so I'm like, I don't know, maybe, maybe going after Christian guys are, is probably the way to go, <laughs> or that I'm talking about, I'm like, Richard was such a nice guy, Ruben was such a nice guy, Jeff was such a nice guy, <laughs> but I was a kid back then, so I didn't know, like, how to tell guys I liked them at that time. I mean, I knew how to tell people, and so everybody knew, so they'd be like, oh, I bet you, oh yeah, and that's the other thing, too, that uh, Ruben and I were so close to the point where we actually... We would be at camp, it would be at a youth group thing, and we'd be sharing the, uh, we'd be talking till like, 4 a.m. about pretty much everything, and people were like, I bet you anything those guys are gonna get married, <laughs> those guys are gonna get married, we never did, <laughs> so if anybody in my youth group was curious, we never did, <laughs> He never did. Sometimes I wonder, but like I said, I don't think a lot of Christian guys could put up with me. Doesn't mean that I'm not gonna, like I said, if I, if I do date again, it would probably will be a Christian guy. Because like I said, now I'm trying to go after guys that are the complete opposite that I like. <laughs> and if I like a guy, like I said, I'm not gonna not say anything, because now I'm like, oh, if only I told Richard, if only I told Ruben, if I only told Jeff how much I did, actually, you know, Jeff, he knew, <laughs> but I was a little kid, so he's like, yeah, no, nothing's gonna happen, <laughs> but I was, like, totally crazy and obsessed over him, I think I saw this photo somewhere, I used to write him letters, it was, <laughs> and then it was funny, but, uh, yeah, I was pretty crazy. That, I think that's when I turned guy crazy, is when I went to Camp Guanos, actually. Because I don't know if you guys know Camp Guanos, but Camp Guanos is actually a Bible camp. <laughs> Where all the key guys are. <laughs> so that's what I was like. As soon as I went to Camp Guanos, I was like, wow, there's so many cute, good-looking guys that are Christian. Where the heck have I been? <laughs> And so then I'd, like, fall madly in love with all these Christian guys. I'd be like, but I was a little kid to them. So it's like, but I was like, oh, these guys are so cute. <laughs> and they're Christians. And but once again, too, just because they're Christian doesn't mean that they're necessarily a good guy. That's the other thing, too, that people, double-sided standards. This is why I'm going douchebag story time is because there's all these double standards. People are like, oh, you can't be Christian because you smoke. Oh, this is because this guy's Christian, he's not going to like you. Or he's, because this guy is Christian, he's, he's going to be too judgmental. Or, like, it's, even Christians are judgmental, sadly. I know so many, so many Christians that are judgmental. 
And we're not supposed to judge anyone except for God. And I guess maybe that's why I'm also talking about the story, too. Is because I get so frustrated when people are like, Oh, you can't be Christian because you're into the Holocaust history and you're into uh, Lizzie Borden and Matthew Bigby and all these ghosts and all that stuff. It's like, no, God gives us things to enjoy. And I enjoy history. Doesn't mean that I have a bad person. And once again, when I did ghost story, ghost stuff, it was not, I was not a ghost hunter. I just went around telling ghost stories. But people would be like, oh, well, you can't believe in ghosts. Even my pastor, my other pastor actually ripped up my Bible. Because there was a part in there that was apparently uh, extra chapters or something like that. And I was like, but that's the only Bible that I could read. And he goes, well, you should have that kind of Bible there. I'm like, once again, you're judging. I'm not reading that part of the Bible. And, yeah, it's just like, there's so many... Oh, there's just so many reasons why people are like, oh, you can't be Christian. So, yeah. It's kind of sad how it is, but... God knows my heart, God knows my faith, and he knows that I love him, and I don't know why, where I was going with this, with these stories, I guess I was just, like, I was just dreaming about them the other day, so I was like, I should probably tell you guys how many, th the time when I did, well, had a different life and how I got away with things and all the guys I like that were Christian, I guess. I don't know. But for some reason I felt like I'd say it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I think I'm going to show you guys uh, my photos since I'm on my Facebook <laughs> next. And just go down the photos to see if you could see it. But I'm, I was such a cute kid. Such a cute kid. <laughs> so I'm going to save them too and add them to the community post as well. But yeah, I just like, I don't know. I don't know why I had to tell you guys those stories, but I just felt like I did. So I hope it makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, I'll share with you guys my uh, photos next here on Phantom Stories. <laughs>